Welcome to a special episode of Scouting on Air. I'm Ivan Dashkevich, and tonight we will be discussing the role of scouting in times of international turmoil. In February of 2022, Russian forces invaded neighboring Ukraine, resulting in one of the most significant humanitarian crises of our time. Tonight we will hear firsthand from a refugee family presently living with an Eagle Scout's home in Krakow, Poland. Then I'll sit down with the members of PLOST, the Ukrainian National Scouting Organization, to discuss what they've done to support those affected by the war. Finally, we'll attend a Troop 189 Pancake Breakfast, which is raising funds for three charities presently helping displaced families in Eastern Europe. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Scouting on Air. I'm your host, Ivan Dashkevich, and today we have a scout from our own neighborhood from Clarkston named Oscar. He's here with us from Poland, and with him are multiple Ukrainian families. We're going to be talking to him about how he took in a few refugees and overall what that has, how has that impacted him. So what motivated you for this act of selflessness? Well, my family is one that loves to help others in need and help them with whatever they need, especially when they're in dire distress. And my family opened up our home to the incoming refugees because we believe that we need to do our part in helping those that have been through a lot in time of crisis with the war going on with 
Russia and Ukraine. With everything that's going on in Russia and the bombardments of cities, they're losing everything that they own. They're losing their houses. They're losing, they're losing friends and family that have to help fight in the war. And maybe those that they can't see anymore because they're far gone and they're somewhere else. You don't know what someone's been through during those times. You don't know how they've gone through some of the stuff and what they've had to do to get across and get all, all the way over here. And the people from Kharkiv, this refugee family, their entire city's destroyed. Their houses, no, like there's no more houses and everything. And they just needed some place to live. They needed some place to have shelter, have clothes, have food. And being one of those families that need to help, we are helping them get everything that they need to be settled. And most of the refugees that come and go, they have already a plan. They go somewhere, somewhere in Europe, maybe Germany or Switzerland, because they have family or friends. But some of these families, they don't have family or friends at all in Europe. They just have them in Ukraine and Russia. So they really have nowhere else to go except the refugee centers and other places like other people's homes. So what our family is trying to do is to give them a home that someone else can't, that they can't get from anywhere else, anywhere in Europe, anywhere, somewhere that's close to their home in Ukraine, like Poland. How do you feel that taking in the refugees, how do you feel that the crisis, the war, and you taking in these families, how has that affected you? Uh, what have you taken away from this experience? So the crisis that's going on in the world right now has definitely affected my daily life big time because hosting refugees from different backgrounds and countries, well, it brings a lot of difference that you, can, you need to think of them. You have to know where they're from and understand it and respect it. And changes in your lives can be good though, especially when you're learning new cultures because it shows you how they do things and how you do things differently. And it shows you new skills that you can learn. Mm -hmm. And you can also find common ground between each other, which is really great. And what I've taken away from this experience is that even though we live in far places and we have differences, we can also have common things that we share, maybe habits or maybe fun sports and activities. Yeah. And uh, obviously, as you said, the cultural differences are very big. You guys are from Clarison, they're from Kharkiv. Uh, could you give us some examples of the biggest cultural differences that you've experienced? So the, fa the first family that we brought in, they love to cook. Like they really love to cook and love to eat. And although they do different ways of cooking and different ways of handling things, uh, it's definitely a culture shock and a half when you have the food in front of you and it may taste different and it's not the same taste as you come from, but it definitely tastes pretty good, I think. And some examples of those uh, dishes is borscht and okroshka. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm calling you that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, I think they're pretty good dishes. From, from my standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say uh, would be the most um, memorable, the most impactful experience throughout this process for you, besides the food, that is? Yeah. So I guess the most memorable was when we got our first family. And even when we haven't moved into our house fully, because we just got here about a month and a half ago, uh, we took them in and they were very kind, although there wasn't a lot to do in the house and they still found ways to make time pass somehow. Their father wasn't, wasn't with the family and because they went to help fight their country in this crisis that we're having right now. And our family, we, we always pray for those that are definitely need, need praying, especially the men that have been drafted to help fight in Ukraine. So praying for the fathers and the husbands is definitely one of the most memorable experiences because they've been through a lot. They haven't seen their husbands or fathers in a very long time, ever since the war started. Oh yeah. And 
I know that you are an Eagle Scout, in fact, or so I was told. And yes. how well do you think that your experience in scouting and your uh, experience in our organization overall has prepared you to tackle uh, this crisis and to face the challenges that come with it? Scouting definitely prepared me for what's happening because it lets me render my skills to the families in need. And scouting helped me realize that the world isn't always cupcakes and rainbows, because it's definitely not. It is rather much different and very important that we realize all around the world that things change, things are different. You need to realize that not everybody's the same and not everybody has the same morals or stuff like that. And there will always be someone in need of help. And as scouts, we must always help however we can to those in need. And scouting prepares the boys and girls on how to help others. And at the same time, teaches them life lessons that will help them understand the world and people around them in the future. Thank you. Now, I would like to have uh, a couple of words with uh, the family behind you as well. So. Yep. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Ваня, я сам родом из Минска, переехал в Штаты 5-7 лет назад. Я понимаю, вы из Украины, мы немножко разные, но мне сказали, что вы были бы не против поговорить со мной на русском языке. Я хотел у вас спросить, можете ли вы описать свое путешествие вот из дома, как все это прошло, как вы добрались вот до границы с Польшей, пересекли, как это все было для вашей семьи? Эвакуационный поезд из Харькова. Вот Харьков, мы вышли в Тернополе. В Тернополе мы немножечко побыли в самом Тернополе. Там какая-то церковь, не знаю какая, они не, ну, не сказали какая, снимает базу отдыха для тех, кто приезжает с Восточного с Востока Украины. Вот. А потом позвонили нам и сказали, что есть семья, которая готова нас принять. Вот приехали сразу. А через границу очень быстро. Мы за 40 минут мы ехали с водителем с Красного Креста. Красный Крест. Они, они привозили в Украину помощь, вывозили беженцев. И вот он нас привез в Краков прямо. И в Юлию Оскара. Это отлично. Я за вас очень и очень рад. Спасибо. Да. Я также видел кадр, как у вас вот во дворе вот фотография вот этой не разорвавшейся, не разорвавшейся бомбы. Можете ли вы мне описать вот немножко, вот как вы себя чувствовали в этот момент, когда вы его увидели, вот эту вот? Я увидела фотографию, это мы уже уехали. А, -а, -а. а видела я дырку от снаряда только один раз, но ямку, куда попал снаряд, но это, это страшно. Uh -huh. Посредине улицы воронку увидеть не ожидаешь, но к этому меня жить не готовила. И к полетам из Сибири над головой тоже меня жить не готовила. Да. Такому ничего не может подготовить. Что бы вы хотели сказать вот, гражданинам Штатов или там, гражданинам Украины? Всем, кому хотели, что вы хоч хотите сказать людям от вашей перспективы? Людям, что... Ну, Украина победит, хорошо. Хочу сказать, что добрых людей очень много и гораздо больше, чем плохих. Не надо людей бояться. Очень много Я ехала одна. Очень переживала за ребенок, это больше вопрос. И когда я выехала, наверное, даже немножко проехавшая, я поняла, что вокруг окружают подобные люди. Все везде помогали, все на границе помогали, везде встречались. 
с едой и с напитками, а везде помогали с ребенком, с чемоданами. Ну, то есть это было не так уж и Хотя Предлагали... я больше боялась. Да, может, Предлагали что-то... одеяло, пледы, согреться, чай, бутерброды. Мы эти бутерброды всю дорогу ели, все предлагали абсолютно. Вот, жульте, да, и Это потрясающая семья. Большое вам спасибо и желаю вам всего самого-самого наилучшего и успехов в ваших вот, будущих путешествиях, и чтобы ваши мужья или сыновья вернулись к вам целыми и здоровыми. Слава Украине! Welcome back. My name is Brooke Muzzy, and today we have some special guests. They are representatives of PLOS Scouts. I'm Sonia Yuzich. Uh, I'm uh, Paul Kazmar. And I'm Nicholas Yuzich. So what is PLAS Scouts and when did you guys get involved? So PLAS is a worldwide Ukrainian, Ukrainian scouting organization. I mean, groups in Australia, Argentina, Germany, and then of course US and Ukraine. South Africa too, <laughs> all over. Yeah, but it's all over the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I started when I was in four. Uh, I was four, I believe, and just went to some camps with a bunch of people that I met. Yeah, so then uh, I started when I was four as well, and uh, PLAS was founded in uh, 1911 by a guy named like Alexander Sosky, along with a guy named uh, Taras Drupinka, and it started as like a it was like just like a camp for boys to go to. Okay. Yes. And I also started at the age of four and have been part of the community since then. So what do you guys do? Uh, a lot of nature and I guess learning about nature as well as just helping out in the community. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of charity work in the area. And, yeah. and then of course during the summer go to camps and have a bun- bunch of fun through yeah. those. Meet a lot of people and we learn about our history too, just of the Ukrainian culture as, as well. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are, it's like a culture-based Ukrainian scouting group. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So what has your organization done after the invasion? Uh, in Ukraine, there's been over, I believe it's 700 in the armed forces who are actively fighting or protecting their areas. And then there's 2,000 who are uh, just volunteers and doing other jobs out there, whether it be helping, uh, helping uh, displaced peoples find places of residency or food or anything like that. And then here in the U.S., we've donated over $500,000 worth of medical equipment to oh. yeah. And then um, our group alone, we collected um, items to create medical kits for the people in Ukraine. And I think we made over 400 kits, and we have already sent them off. Wow. Um, So what inspired you to make these medical kits? I think just wanting to help and support those in Ukraine, both the soldiers and just the citizens there, and um, wanting or letting them know that they're not alone and we want to help them. Yeah, I mean, you see all these very incredibly sad things uh, across the news and even just online because that's where you find everything. Right. But it's just you wanted to help them. It's And obviously this is by providing medical equipment, you're, I think, the top way, number one way of helping them. Yes. And, um, well. well, actually the first uh, Plastoon died on March 5th, I believe, wow. at 19 years old. So just knowing that he's 18 years old, my brother, and knowing that kids like him are fighting for their freedom. Mm -hmm. And their lives are at risk. Yes. That's very scary. Um, I also understand that you guys wrote Ukrainian soldiers some letters. Uh, What did you guys, like, how did you guys decide to do that? Yes, so uh, like from like here, we sort of feel like helpless. There's like nothing like we can do. At least we can like write letters telling people that like we're with them and a short support for them because their fun is like war sort of seems like unwinnable for them but sort of like provides them some like support to like, keep on fighting. That's yeah. really nice. 
I think it's, for me especially, it's incredibly tough watching lots of these kids who are my age and only very slightly older, uh, watching them and they're fighting these people who, who many of them consider their brothers just, just across the border and it's just incredibly hard watching it and obviously they're, it's very hard to keep high spirits when you're doing that so I think writing letters was just a nice way to get in touch with them, make sure that they know the whole world is supporting them. Yeah, I suppose they're not checking Twitter every day, so no. um, getting those handwritten letters probably means a lot to know that other people can see them. Yeah, and the Ukrainian community around the world is trying to help them also, just you know, letting them know. Yeah, so how have your PLOST counterparts in Eastern Europe, um, how have they responded to this crisis? Oh, I guess once again, going back to those numbers, it's there's a lot fighting, obviously, in those in those little territories, like little, little territorial battles, excuse me, but as well as the 2,000 across, uh, across the entire country who are, I guess, distributing the medical kits as well as just getting donations and helping those displaced people. And uh, the PLAST Ukraine has been um, helping provide vehicles that have uh, gas already in them <laughs> for uh, just the military and the soldiers. Also, they're like in like destiny, like uh, like translators. So one of our like camp, one of my camp counselors that I've had before, mm -hmm. he was on the news and he was like translating for local townspeople yeah. in the village. That's a that's a really great a great way to be able to help out at home. Yeah. Um, so, how has this affected you all personally and your families more than just what we've already learned? We go ahead. Okay. Well. <laughs> Um, one of our camp uh, grounds, or where we have one of our camps, in West Virginia, Seneca Rocks, it's a rock climbing camp, um, but the leader there, he wanted to put up a flag big enough for people to see on the mountain, mm -hmm. so I decided to step in and I sewed, and I believe it was 150 square foot flag, wow. and it's up on the mountain right now, so. I think that's super cool that they that's wanted really to help out. That's a big impact. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, obviously, unfortunately, we have family who are over there who have been having a tough time. I mean, they are, keeping in touch with them is obviously hard because they have to deal with all the commotion, but it's, it's just incredibly, it's it always incredibly difficult when you hear back from them because it's always something that's very, very depressing and you're like, oh God, that's, it's not very nice, but it's even even outside of the family, I've interacted with a lot of people there. So for me, it's kind of, it's very hard to watch them go through with this as well as just, once again, know these kids are my age who are fighting. I know, in my, in my Saturday school, I, we, go, we all go to Ukrainian Saturday school to learn about like history and culture. And most of the kids in that school are like from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, they came over here when they were little kids, so most of them still have like grandparents or parents that are still over there. And then my, I do Ukrainian folk dancing, and our uh, leader actually went to Ukraine for a week to try to like, help his family get out and other families as well to get on trains to like, uh, Warsaw, Poland. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody who is over in Ukraine that you guys know, or these any strangers, I hope they're all safe. Um, but what do you guys think the role of scouting has in international crises? I think it's to help provide support as well as just any humanitarian relief that's necessary, I believe. I mean, just help out, I think, as best as I can. I know that uh, we at our scout troop, like, uh, he's organizing um, like, some, like, like a bowling event or some events to help the uh, displaced kids that came to America, like uh, intermingle with the uh, like local people here. Try to like make really some friends. Cool thing to do. And our school, like my old uh, elementary school, some of the kids there are already kids that are from Ukraine, and so they've been like, helping them. They might pace like learn, they used to, like stay during the day. So. Yeah, I definitely think in history we've seen scouting step up in um, times of need where um, people need supplies or help doing things, and we see historic photos of scouts who are helping. So. I hope you guys know that you are being part of history right now. Wow. 
Well, I just had a really great conversation with you guys and I learned so much. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Brooke Muzzy and this was a special interview with Scouting on Air. They're putting their pain, their, their lives and their destinies into humanity's hands. And so we just want to try and be part of that, those hands that are holding them up and supporting them. A pancake breakfast hosted by Clarkson Troop 189 collected approximately $6,200 to support those displaced by the war in Ukraine. Oscar Benson, a Troop 189 Eagle Scout now living abroad in Krakow, Poland, inspired his fellow scouts to action when his family began welcoming refugees into their home. Taking place at Clarkson United Methodist Church, the breakfast was staffed by 20 youth scouts working alongside adult volunteers. The youth cooked and served more than 750 pancakes over the course of the meal. An estimated 250 people attended the breakfast, according to the troop. While the breakfast only cost $10 to attend, many patrons decided to donate much more. One benefactor even pledged $500 to cover the food costs. Other donations from those who could not attend in person are still trickling in. The proceeds from the event will be earmarked and divided between three nonprofits presently supporting Ukrainian refugees. The Ukrainian National Scouting Organization, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Poland. Thank you everyone for tuning in to this very special episode. On behalf of our Scouting on Air team, our hearts go out to all those affected by war and conflict all over the world. This has been yours in Scouting, Ivan Dashkevich and Brooke Muzzy.